Hey guys, it's Army Tricks from Game Tech, and today I'm going to be showing you how to overclock any NVIDIA graphics card. So, how this works is you'll have to download a piece of software called MSI Afterburner, and MSI is quite a famous graphics card manufacturer anyway. And this software overclocks your graphics card. So what you'll want to do is launch it and it will automatically detect your graphics card and its driver version. Then what you'll want to do is start from the default settings and you have to be very careful with this and adjust the core clock and the memory clock and if you have the options um, don't adjust the voltage quite yet. Uh, adjust the spe fan speed up a bit just to make sure it doesn't overheat and start moving this up by about 20 megahertz at a time so if you move it up by about 20 25 at a time and then apply and check if anything's gone wrong with say a benchmark test um, one I uh, one I actually recommend is called heaven which is heaven benchmark 4.0 and this is a benchmark tester so once you set something say 20 megahertz above what your normal it, normal amount is you've overclocked it by 20 megahertz um, open up heaven which should open up now you don't need to download the full version or anything just make sure it's on direct x 11 english quality set to whatever you want but remember once you set it to something you have to keep it on that Disable tessellation, disable stereo 3D, multi monitor if you have it, enable it if you want, I don't know. Anti aliasing, put on X8, and make sure full screen is ticked and the resolution is the max resolution of your monitor. Then run a test and wait till the whole thing ends and then you can close it again. Now, if 20 megahertz overclocking works fine, you can start to ramp it up a bit more to about 50 megahertz, and then or 75 even. Do the same with both, and make sure they're both stable, and then hit apply. And keep an eye on your GPU temperature. Just make sure it doesn't go too far above 50 to 60 degrees. Because, well, it depends on your graphic card how much it can take, really. But a lot of the newer ones can take up to 80 degrees, but mine can't take more than around 70. So I have to keep an eye on that. And it's at 36, so that's fine. But when you run this, it should heat up quite a bit. So then once you've ramped it up again, run this. If there are any, like, flashing or something like that, return it back to what it was, how it worked. And you have to be very careful with this. Then you can ramp it up a bit more to say another 50 and another 50 and check if that works and that's fine and then keep testing it over and over with um, the benchmark tests and you should see that your performance and FPS do improve as you go along while you ramp it up and also while you do that you should get your fan settings done so open up these settings down here go into fan and tick enable user defined fan control now from here you can um, enable when your fan goes at a particular percentage speed so say we get to 40 degrees fan speed is at 70% so it gradually increases you can obviously set it at max for everything but I don't like to do that because otherwise my computer gets extremely loud and I know a lot of people find that annoying so set a smooth line or straight line along here whichever works best for you and whichever keeps the temperature down best and yeah that's it so that's with the fan part and then if you go oh that's not working there we go if you go on to monitoring you can also monitor your gpu temperature in game so you can see how much of your gpu is being used at any one time so to do that, tick show on screen display and tick which part you want to show on screen. GPU temperature usage, fan speed, core clock, shader clock, it's all there. 
So if you're going to show that, just tick it for that particular thing and it will show. And make sure on dis on screen display is toggled on at all times. You might want to set a display hotkey. And you can also use multiple graphics cards. So I've seen people with multiple like a Titan and a GTX 650 or something. They can switch between both and overclock both. Um, force constant voltage, you want to leave that kind of thing alone for now, because you can set a, a dynamic voltage thing where it imp where it increases the voltage sometimes and things like that. And sometimes graphics cards need that, and they don't tend to work that well on a constant voltage. And make sure you get the latest updates, because these can help with overclocking, reduce lag, etc. And that's it for this video, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video, see ya.